Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Type 5 Kari. It's a Tier 8 Japanese premium tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Fisherman's Bay and it's under the command of Jerry Killer. Oh, he sounds like he's got one of the commanders. Don't know which one, but obviously we'll probably find out. Okay, well, let's see how he gets on. 127mm main gun, capable of doing, uh, what is it? What, 500 alpha? Yep, it's very high. 252mm pen with standard AP. With the premium rounds, it's 298mm pen. So see that 292, 252 goes up to 298 but it's still 500. The velocity is actually very fast as well, 1,150 with the APCR, 980 with the standard. It's basically, you could say, looking at it straight away, a Japanese version of a Yang Tiger. Now, he has taken it up to the center line straight off, which is not the traditional place for a tank destroyer to be. It does have good frontal armor, just like a Yang Tiger, but uh, it kind of lacks some of the mobility, or rather the maneuverability of its opponents. Side, so he's gone up to this corner to try and get shots on the T-150, but he left a little too late. Only a short distance away is the Type 59 as well. Our Iron Arnie made a bit of a bad boot there. He moved in where he should have gone, and he's now down to his last few hit points. And I think he's going to be out of the game very shortly. Well, he's still getting shots but not for long. He's, how he's surviving with just 87 hit points, I don't know. Well, he didn't survive. In the end, he got taken out by a T-43, and that was a total waste of a Tier 8 by uh, a Tier 7. Okay, let's see if he can get shots on this Type 59, which, of course, is a Tier 8, but it's a very good Tier 8. It's the Chinese version of a Type 54, or a T-54, now he's just across the way, so it would be a good idea for us to pull back and not to expose our sides. This thing has weak sides, even if it does have a very strong frontal armor. So you don't want to get spotted by the enemy. He's way too close to that Type 59, really, although the Type's not actually detecting him. In fact, actually, the Type's pulled away, so he never actually spotted the Kari at all. So Jerry Killer got away with that one, but look at this. Yeah, the Type 59 looking to try and get across the road, and he is across the road. Uh, we didn't get shots on him. Mind you, our Barask has moved across the road, and now we've been spotted. And I'm wondering where the Type's gone. There he is. He's going way over. Now, it's going to make him vulnerable. Good shot right in the engine bay. 371 hit points with one round. Well, I see where that 500 Alpha comes in. The fact that you can nuke enemy tanks with a shell like that. But there again, I suppose with the Yag Tiger, you're shooting 750 Alpha from the uh, 15 centimeter gun. And um, yeah, I suppose so. They are comparable in that sense. But remember, this is a tier eight and that's a tier nine. Well, the Brask is headed down towards the town. Uh, we do have a problem here because we've got uh, an AMX 1375 and just a bit further along, I think it's a CS-52. But he's actually crossed the road and leaving his rear in full view. That T-43 that killed our uh, Iron Arnie has actually now made his way across the road. We did get spotted, but nobody fired at us. Uh, won't change. That will change very shortly because I'm pretty certain one of the enemies is going to fire. Now, he could have hit that T-78. Guy's backing up. Oh, he got him! He just wiped him out with one round. And the T-78 didn't even see him. And in fact, he didn't see the outline. But he guessed correctly when that guy was going to be pulling back. And boy, did he get him. That T-78's probably saying, hack, hack. Oh, and he's done it again! This time a T-150 gets taken out of the game. I wonder how many other tanks he's going to destroy. Well, he's popping down to the town now because I think he feels lucky. But you've got to watch out. There's a KV-5 down there. And they are very well armoured. You have to hit the Dalek if you want to make them go bang. And he can hit the Dalek, but he's going for the side of the... Oh, no, he goes for the Dalek. And he gets the Dalek, gets a low roll. 489. The KV-5 
he's not really paying attention. But he is now. They couldn't get him in time there on the reload. The reload is one of the big problems. Standard reload, according to the book, is 12.75 seconds. And you can see that Jerry Killer has got it down to 10.63. And he's finished loading. Okay, so he's got around in. All he has to do is drive around the corner and hit the KV-5. Instead, he just drove straight past where the KV-5 was. Oh, that's an afterthought. He turns around and says, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, that wasn't his kill. And he hit the Barask on his own team with that shell. So sadly, he missed the fact that he was actually driving straight past. Oh, watch out, because the Amex 1375 for a second, I thought he might be backing out to take a shot from the AMX 1375 and get hit twice, but he didn't. He's just holding his position at the moment. There might be a Scorpion nearby as well, and I think it is the yeah, the German oh, Scorpion. His teammates are saying fall back. In fact, it might be a good idea for him to go down to the water and skirt up that way. If he goes to the water, the scorpion might not be watching that side. Yeah, I wonder why he didn't actually pay attention to that KV-5. He just drove past the opening where the KV-5 was hiding. He could have just driven around the corner and shot him in the uh, rear and he would have had another kill. But three kills is good so far for Jerry Killer. Oh, we took a round from that Liss. Oh, the Liss is up there waiting for us. And the Barask is moving up to try and get shots. And he has got shots. But he's fired his two. And now he's putting back. We're trying to help the... Uh, well, we're actually helping ourselves to the Churchill as, as armor. Mobile armor. Ow, he deliberately waited until we came into view. Didn't fire at the Churchill 7. But now, is he going to pull back, or is he going to take a round from our big gun? Now, don't expose your weak sides. No, I reckon that CS-52 Liss has decided to scarper. Oh, and he hits us again, but this time Randy gets us in the tracks. So I was wrong yet again. And now he's still there, but now we should drive over and return the favour. Trying to go for the turret. Nope, bounced off. Would have been better going for the hull. No, you should just drive straight over and blast him from the bushes. Okay, here we go. Now, that's better. Got that one into the hull. But it's left him a one shot. The Barask is loaded, ready to go. Don't turn sideways. You're actually making yourself vulnerable to the CS-52. He wants that kill a distance on the G2. He's just sitting there as an open target for the CS-52 to fire into the side. Okay, where is he now? I'd fire into the same spot where the CS-52 was the previous time, just in case he's still there. No, he's spotted another target he wants, the ARL V39. No, not there. There's the end gap to the road. The trouble is, if he does go down there, the CS list is, CS-52 is probably going to have another go at him. The Barasks decided he wants the arrow, and he's gone. Good. Okay, be careful when you're moving up like that. You need to angle, yes, but not over-angle. If you, if you uh, expose the sides, the sides of the vehicle are weak. The front is strong. But the sides on this one are weak. The front arm is 220 millimeters. The side arm is only 50, you see. So that's why you, uh, in fact, uh, it's 220 is the hull arm, sorry, I should say. The turret bit, because it is basically a turret. Oh, that died. That was the list. Go for it. Get him. Oh, missed it. Yes, the hull armor is only um, the turret armor at 300 millimeters at the front, 30 at the sides. That's why you shouldn't expose the sides, you see. It's too dangerous. 
Okay, he's taking a risk crossing the road because the G2 is on our left. And he takes down the CS-52. Now, if he'd done that a few minutes earlier, we wouldn't have lost the Churchill 7. If he just, all he had to do was drive up to the bushes and shoot through because the list was using that uh, building for cover. And he could have just shot at the corner and got taken out the vehicle that way. Okay, he's reloading and he's going for the HE round. The 1375 is hiding behind the building. Of course, thin armor on an AMX 1375. Question is, who's at the back? Well, that's the Scorpion. So he might take a round from the Scorpion if uh, he goes after the 1375. Brask's in the position to try and put a shot in. We've got an SU-100 over on the west side of the map looking in this direction. No, he's looking south because he's got a Super Hellcat and Achilles trying to take him out. So we could flush the guy out by going around the building. No, the, the Brask is going to do it instead. So he might get the advantages. If he goes around the... Oh, he's done it the other way around. No, he, what he needed to do was go down to the uh, to the east, circle around the buildings, and come up behind the AMX 1375, flush him, and then we bag him. Basically like a hunting technique. But I have the feeling the Barask is going to run up through the town, and sit down the main high street. He might get spotted by the 1375, though, but as soon as he gets to a gap, he can shoot up take out the 1375 so we should start moving around about now if we move now that will distract the amx 1375 he's spotting for the scorpion anyway i'm wondering now if the brask has that intent or if he's actually using this run to try and get at the scorpion I get the feeling that's what the Barask is up to. He's now trying to find the Scorpion because the Scorpion's looking intently in this direction, trying to get Jerry Killer. And he's not paying attention to what's going on up here. Yes, now the thing is that he suddenly realized what he was supposed to do. Go around the outside and take out the 1375. But now we're going to do it from the angle. And there you go. That's what was supposed to happen. But the Barask wasn't paying attention, you see. So the Scorpion's now lost his spotter. And there's a VK in the bushes at the back. Now we can go around the corner because the Iron Army is a wreck. We can use that as cover. Don't expose yourself. The Scorpion's still down there. Okay, it's an AFK. No, a bit to the left. Oh, we got him. And that's the Top Gun. Okay, now reload. Use the wreck around the corner. Go to where the Iron Army is. Okay, he's platooned. He's platooned with the Barask, and they've both got over three kills, so and there's the SU-100. Now, where is that Scorpion? He must be over on the left side of the map, on the west. In fact, he is. There he is. And we can now chase them, because there's only those two left. Now, we did just lose our Achilles. Tiger looks like he's going to the cap area. Rask is chasing them. Jerry Killer looks like he wants to ambush them. He's now switching to AP, standard AP. I forgot to mention the uh, the alpha of the HE rounds, by the way. It's a uh, 630 alpha, which is why he was able to overwhelm that AMX 1375 with just one round. This course, very thin armor on the MX 1375. Okay, now he's got to make sure these shells count though. The Scorpion, he should be able to use the uh, HE. In fact, he's loading HE. Okay, now he's going in. We've got one minute left on the game. Come on, you can do it. Just wipe this guy out with one round. No, don't stop, stop. Keep going, keep going. You haven't got the time. Now do it from there. When he got the pen in, we took a round in the gun. But he is now one shot. We've got the SU-100 coming up on the side and he's being chased by the brass. So go for the kill. Take this guy out. Oh, keep moving. Keep moving. Go, turn. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Now take the SU-100. 
and get the kill to get the Radleys. You can do it. Yeah! <laughs> Brilliant. 12 kills. What a game by Jerry Killer in the car re. Well, that was an absolutely brilliant game by Jerry Killer in the car re. He could have made some improvements, uh, but I won't get into those right now because I want to celebrate exactly what he did. He managed to get a first-class tanker out of that game, but it's not the first time he's had a first class. He has had them before. He's also managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a 1,000 hit points of damage, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. But best of all, the medals that follow, he got a Radley Waters. He took out eight enemy vehicles in the game. He also managed to get a Brothers in Arms for being a platoon with somebody else who managed to get at least three kills. And he got three kills, uh, so they both managed to get it. And he got a crucial contribution because between him and the Barras, they managed to get 12 kills in total. So basically, they took down the enemy in that game altogether with a top gun for getting at least six kills. And I'm pretty certain that that Barras was very happy to platoon with Jerry Killer because he got two medals, uh, or at least one medal out of it himself. His win eight in the game, 3,820, which is super unicum standard, but it's just a pity he missed out on an ace tanker out of that game as well. That would have been nice, and maybe even the high caliber. Let's have a look at team scores. Well, you can see who actually ended up with the high caliber. The Brask actually managed to get a Brothers in Arms crucial contribution, high caliber, confederate, and tank sniper in that game, um, Chew, is that Peacher Mob? Peacher Noob 145. Well, congratulations for quite a game. I'm a bit surprised you didn't take out the AMX 1375, but I guess you were leaving that to Jerry Killer so he could take out. Uh, he managed to get 5,681 hit points of damage from that game. Second highest damage went to Jerry Killer with 3,272, and the third highest damage, well, that went to the Scorpion with 2,334. When it came to kills, it was Jerry Killer. Eight kills, Radley Waters. Four kills went to the Barask, and three kills went to the KV-5, the SU-100 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, well, there was only two players in it, really, if you think about it. They were the only two who managed to get over 1,000, with the Barask picking up 1,400 and Jerry Killer getting 1,243. So between them, they did incredibly well. And I think it's also... You could say that the Barras was also a gentleman because he actually left that last kill to Jerry Killer. He could have taken it. He could have, but he didn't. He left it to Jerry Killer because he knew Jerry Killer was on for a, for a Radley Waters and he left him to get the kill. So he got the Radley Waters and between them, they both ended up with a crucial contribution and brothers in arms as well. So he is a true gentleman. Uh, Peacher, Pe Pe is that Peacher Noob? Peacher Noob. <laughs> some of these names they're very difficult to work out anyway let's have a look at the detailed 15 shots fired 15 direct hits and nine penetrations so he was very accurate in that game 100 percent accuracy two splash as well 3272 hit points of damage of which 930 were at more than 300 meters six hits received three penetrations three non-penetrations so he was lucky and it does have frontal armor that's very strong, like a Yag Tiger, but it's the side armor you've got to watch out for. 810 hit points of damage blocked by armor. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, um, eight were destroyed, and he got 1,356 hit points of spotting assist in that game. On a premium count, he actually earned 149,129 credits from that game. He got a 30,000 mission completion, and uh, he also picked up 25 bonds, for another mission achievement, and on top of that, 3,916 experience points as well. Well, that was quite a game. I did say there were some corrections he could have made. I said he could have driven up to that bush and shot the, uh, or the, the brass could have gone around the outside and shot the, um, uh, the AMX 1375, or that he could do it instead and actually shoot that AMX 1375. In the end, when the brass decided to go all the way up to the back, he had to shoot the guy himself, but he shot him from the corner and took him out. He could have done that a lot earlier, actually. And the same with the CS-52 list. He could have just driven across the middle of the, um, the road, as he had done earlier in the game, and just caught the uh, CS-52, taking it out of the game. And he could also use the uh, Iron Arnie 
to, as cover to, to shoot to the north. Uh, as it was, it looks like the enemy decided the Scorpion and the SU-100, they decided they wanted to get out of there as quickly as they could because they realized that um, Jerry Killer's team were coming in force and that uh, everybody was falling be before them. And so they decided to scarper, but Jerry managed to catch up with them. Um, yeah, he just needed to keep moving when that uh, Scorpion planted around into him. And uh, then once he kept moving, because he blocked the first shot with his gun, uh, it was, uh, the subsequent shot that actually got the hit the target. But um, yes, he could have just kept moving and chasing that guy until he effectively just blew him away because the Scorpion didn't have the armor to stand up to the HE round. And in the end, actually, it did take him down. But it's a lovely finishing shot there as well to take out the SU-100 while he was trying to scarper. And it was basically the brass was hurting him like sheep, almost trying to keep him in position so that uh, Jerry Killer could get the uh, Radley Waters. So quite a battle there by Jerry Killer. Thanks for sending in the replay. Um, that was very entertaining indeed. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.